Hello everyone, my name is Noor, a student at the Future University in Egypt. We appreciate that we are part of this conference. Um, today we'll be discussing our research study titled The Effect of Exploitative Leadership on Employee Wellbeing. Employee well-being is one of the most essential factors for the organization to stay committed and improve performance. It can simply become the driver of employee success both inside and outside the workplace, as it's described as the overall quality of an employee's experience and functioning. There are several influential factors that could affect the employee's well-being. However, the interaction between the leader and employees remain one of the most important factors. Leadership plays an important role. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, excuse me, would you please flap the slide? I'm sorry, I'm trying to. Okay, <laughs> take your time. I apologize. Never mind, dear. Leadership plays an, a major role in the workplace and has a dynamic impact on employees as leaders provide guidance and support to achieve the organizational goals. There are certain styles of leadership that have begun to rise that organizations are highly concerned about, such as the exploitative leadership. This type of leadership is characterized with selfish behaviors, obtaining credit from other employees at work, leaders using employees for personal gain and unfair treatment. Such behaviors could probably lead to a high amount of stress and lower productivity. Therefore, it's important to discuss the effect of exploitative leadership on the employee well-being. The two, the two variables we're discussing today are the exploitative leadership and the employee well-being. Exploitative leadership is, is described as the type of leader that would exploit and undermine the employees for their personal gain. These type of leaders would take advantage of employees by acting selfishly, exerting control, and overburdening their subordinates. These toxic leadership styles lead to increased turnover, burnout, and many other negative outcomes that are yet to be discussed. Employee well-being, however, is defined as the physical and emotional health of employees as a result of changes within or outside any workplace. It has emerged as one of the greatest challenges faced by managers, according to certain scholars. Experiencing more positive emotions at work has significant influences on both individual outcomes and organizational performance and productivity. Here we have the dimensions of the employee well-being, which include the psychological, the social, and the subjective well-being. The beginning with the psychological well-being dimension, it refers to the person's value, the experience that are more effective on the well-being, therefore affecting their work activities. It describes the person's feelings and emotions, such as happiness, satisfaction, or being proud when a goal is accomplished, or being praised for the work that is done. Then we have the social well-being dimension. This dimension explains the feelings of being a part of an environment that one could affect and get affected. Having social interactions such as simple conversation or being a part of a group that are important to the social well-being, as well as the social support which can be given or received. Moving on lastly to the subjective well-being dimension, which describes the person's overall life experience and happiness, but the, from the person's own perspective meaning that there are general moods and emotions that one could experience in a short period that could thereby build the long-term subjective well-being. Moving on to the research problem, the positive styles of leadership can actually enhance the employee behavior, which leads to positive organizational outcomes, and it can enhance employee well-being, according to several scholars. On the other hand, certain negative leader behaviors can affect employees' emotions and attitudes in the workplace. Since exploitative leadership is considered a disruptive form of leadership style, it's expected that this style would negatively affect employee well-being. However, no previous research actually assesses the two variables together. So this research aims to fill this gap in the literature by examining the effect of exploitative leadership on the employee well-being. Our research investigates the dairy sector in Egypt, and even though this sector is one of the most contributing sectors in the Egyptian economy, it is severely understudied. Therefore, this research is very beneficial to both practitioners and researchers. So, 
Our research problem statement is that there is the lack of evidence and knowledge concerning the effect of exploitative leadership behaviors on employees' well-being, as well as the lack of research in an important sector such as the industry in Egypt. The research objectives. Our main objective is to examine the exploitative leadership and its effect on the well-being. Then we have to investigate the employees' well-being levels in the dairy industry. We also must determine the level of adoption of this leadership style, which is the exploitative leadership in the Egyptian dairy industry. Lastly, is to assist HR practitioners to avoid this leadership style and help them understand it and its effects. Moving on, we have the research model. The slides are not moving. I'm sorry. I apologize, there was a problem with the slideshow. Uh, explaining the research model. Okay. As shown in the research model, we have an independent variable, which is the exploitative leadership, and the dependent variable, which is the employee well-being. Our independent variable has four main dimensions, which are displaying egotistic behaviors and selfish behaviors, taking credit from other deserving employees, exerting pressure and work overload on the employees with their tasks, and determining I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and undermining their development and career improvement. While the dependent variable is the employee well-being, has the three main dimensions that we previously explained in the previous slides. Then we have the research hypothesis. The scholars have already proved that exploitative leaders engage in manipulative and selfish acts to ensure their own interests are met. They undermine the employee's development, exert an exceeding amount of work pressure, take credit from other employees' work, display an egotistic behavior, give poor, boring tasks and place high job demand. These acts of injustice could lead to employees feeling undermined, affecting their health, their behavior, lose trust in the workplace, therefore affecting the organization as a whole. Based on the previous research uh, results, we hypothesize that exploitative leadership has a negative effect on the employee well-being, and we are testing the exploitative leadership effects on the dimensions of the employee uh, well-being, ranging from psychological to social to subjective well-being. In order to test the hypothesis, a sample of the 353 employees in Dina Farms and Johanna were chosen for the study owing to these companies' dominance in Egypt's dairy business. A survey was electronically distributed to the research sample, consisting of two main parts. The first part, measuring the exploitative leadership as adopted from Schmidt and colleagues in 2019, while the second part measures employee well-being as adopted from Pradhan and Hati in 2022. The SEM, which is known for the structure equation modeling, is used for in the, the investigation of the impact of the variables on each other. Through the statistical analysis and the data that we have gathered, we concluded that, that exploitative leadership and employee well-being have a significant relationship in which exploitative leadership negatively influences the employee well-being. Therefore, the hypothesis of H1, H1A, H1B, H1C are accepted. Based on the research results, it's recommended that leaders and employees have to be well-educated about the exploitative leadership through different training programs. Then we have to, uh, we have to prom they have to promote a positive workplace as empathy, respect, and honesty should be a manager's top priority. The, then they have to give the employees the support and the resources needed to avo avoid unethical attitude that could lead to exploitative leadership. Then we uh, they have to uh, hold the leaders accountable for their selfish actions. Then we recommend that they seek help from higher level managers when, when exposed to an exploitative leader. Then, when having su sufficient time for personal life and goals, which would eliminate leaders to act in an exploitative way, then we could balance the work and life. Then we, um, they must be helping the workers to complete their tasks efficiently by providing the needed resources. And 
and communication is often the key to solving problems, therefore it should be encouraged. Our conclusion for the day, this study informs HR practitioners and stakeholders on how to eliminate this type of leadership and its negative effects in order to improve employees in the workplace and ultimately improve overall organizational performance. Organizations should strive to create an environment that encourages fair treatment, respectful communication, and supportive leadership styles. We would like to thank Dr. Christine, our supervisor, uh, Professor Dr. Ah Professor Ahmad Azmi, Professor Ghadir, Professor Abad Sahan, the president of the Future University in Egypt. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Me and my co-author, Nada Magdi, are ready to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you so much for your presentation. It's really an excellent presentation. And this topic is really important for everyone who is working in any place, whatever the type of the industry is, because when it comes to have a different levels and different types of leadership styles, which may enhance or uh, affect positively or negatively the performance of the employee, it's really important. So I'd like to ask the audience if anyone has a question to ask for the speakers. Uh, okay, I'd like to ask you a question regarding if you are working right now after graduation in a specific company and do you face this type of leadership style as a separate leadership style, how you could uh, deal with this kind of, uh, of uh, leadership style? To enhance uh, your well-being and to try to balance between what you have in a pressure and stress in your workplace and how it will not impact your performance negatively. I am currently uh, not employed in any uh, organization, but, uh, but I, have, I have definitely experienced a certain type of uh, a toxic leader. Uh, I'm sorry? So, I'm sorry? Um, yes, I'm hearing you well. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last part of the question. Okay, uh, by question one, I don't like that you are not working right now, but I said uh, after graduation, when you have an opportunity to work, and you face, unfortunately, this kind of leadership, how you can deal with? Uh, it has to be dealt with very professionally. I have to, uh, yeah, I have to consult someone as a higher man in a higher managerial level. I have to seek help from outside. Uh, this leader should be stopped from this uh, malicious actions. Um, we have to promote the uh, communicating uh, environment in the workplace in order to, when we are exposed to a certain type of leader like this, we should be able to report it to anyone or, or, a, or a certain supervisor that we could talk to. There are multiple ways to avoid this type of leadership and present solutions. We could eliminate this type of leadership just by taking the right steps and providing the right listeners for this problem. Okay, thank you so much.